God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. From the Gospel of John, the love of God is shed abroad, that God, by His love to us, has given us what we've needed for our sin, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. We are all sinners. We all need God to be saved. It's not of what we can do. It's not what man can do. But the man, Christ Jesus. Behold the man. The man, Christ Jesus, would take away the sins of the world. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. Now the place in the Scriptures about the Word is in 1 John 5, verse 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. If I've got my Bible correct, what I hold in my hand is the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, John writes to us, that Jesus is the Word. Men wrote the Bible, is true, inspired by the Word, Jesus Christ. And what is the Word? What does the Word proclaim? It proclaims that we are all sinners. It proclaims that sinners will burn in hell without the Word, Jesus Christ. The love of God is that we bring you the Word to you. We don't bring you opinions. We don't bring you philosophy. We bring the Word, Jesus Christ. That is the difference between religion and God. Religion is man-made. God is the Word. And let me warn you, if you reject the Word, you reject Jesus Christ. You cannot say, oh, sweet Jesus, but I don't read my Bible. You can't say you're saved and I reject the Word of God. You cannot have any relationship with God and cut up the Word of God and add to the Word of God because the Bible says that the Word of God is Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the Word. When was Jesus Christ in the beginning? When God spoke, let there be. When God spoke, let there be out of His mouth, that is the Lord Jesus Christ being there at the creation, as the Creator. So another conflict of interest is... You'll get out of there. Run. The other conflict is... You cannot be an evolutionist and be saved by God because there is no evolution. The Word proclaims that the Word of God made everything that is to be today, John chapter 1. So you've got to believe that Jesus is the Word, Jesus is God, and Jesus is the Creator of all things. There's no room for theistic evolution, and I'm not here to preach anything but Jesus, but let me know about theistic evolution. Denies the gospel that Christ died for our sins, was buried, and arose again according to the scriptures. Because theistic evolution says God made it all. We'll agree with that. And then God just left it. Well, God just left to explain to me Calvary's cross, Jesus going there. If theistic evolution is correct, God just left it, well, there's no room for the cross. Because God did not just leave it. God still had a relationship with Adam and Eve. God had a relationship with David. God had a relationship with the prophets. God had a relationship with three disciples. God had a relationship.
relationship with those apostles. God has a relationship with those that believe on His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Theistic evolution is not the way of the Gospel. I'm done with theistic evolution. But the Bible proclaims that the Word is Jesus. There's the Father, there's the Word, there's the Holy Spirit. So what I hold in my hands, now I understand, I've got marked Bibles. You can't mark Jesus Christ. He wouldn't take a tattoo or mark, because that's against the Bible. But yet, this Word inspired, breathed by God, the Holy Spirit, is the Lord Jesus Christ, the words that we speak. The words that come out of my mouth are from the Holy Spirit that dwells in me by the gospel that Christ died for my sins. Believing upon that, having the Spirit dwell in me, because I am a child of God by Jesus. And when I speak what the Bible says, I am speaking to you, Jesus Christ. And when you reject what these words from the Bible, you are not rejecting me. I am not the idiot. I am not the, the killjoy. But you are rejecting Jesus Christ. And you'll have to give an account and stand before Him as you stand in awe when you realize that there is a Jesus Christ. He is the way. He is the truth. And He is the life. And when God acknowledges to you that that guy that's loud and preaching my word is right and those feet I enjoy and love. And only Bible believers would know what I just said. You got to come to realize some of you have to hear us every week. And I'm just not up here screaming and top my lungs this Stupid words. I'm not here just to, you know, I got some time to kill. I am here with Jesus. I am here with the Word of God. The Word of God says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. I'm not using my voice to promote insanity, sports, perverts. Prostitutes on the screen, wicked and evil music. I am here using my voice for the Lord Jesus Christ. I am lifting up the Word of God, which is Jesus. When you open these pages, I said, this is a material book, but the pages, the words, are the incarnate God, Jesus Christ. Everything from Genesis to Revelation is about the Lord Jesus Christ. Every chapter in this book is about Jesus Christ. And we bring this book to you to tell you everything in your life is supposed to be about Jesus. If it's not about Jesus, you will be at a loss, saved or lost. If you're a Christian and you're not living to what the Bible tells you how to live and not doing what God has told you to do, you will have your works burned and loss of crowns and rewards. And maybe an inheritance in the millennium. If you are here today, you have never believed on the Word of God as Jesus, as Savior, as the payment of sin. You will burn in hell. Realize that the Bible says through Jesus' own mouth, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall never pass away. What never passes away? The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. There's only one place you won't find God, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. In hell. But that's not the kind of place you want to be without the absence of God. You see, without the absence, the absence of God in your life is a literal hell. 
a lake of fire, of torment, being tormented, in torment, burning forever, is the result of not having God in your life. But oh, if you were to believe on the word Jesus, if you were to put your faith and trust in Jesus, what God will put into you is remarkable. Number one, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved is you do not go to hell. That ought to be enough. Enough for God to say, hey, I'm not going to send you to the devil's hell. That's enough. But God has more. Number two, you get to dwell in His presence for all eternity. You get to go to heaven by the one that said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Take your religion out. You can't get to God, you can't get to heaven, except by Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ alone. And you better make sure you have the biblical Jesus Christ, because we are warned in the Bible, the Word of God, that there are other Jesuses out there. There's a wimpy Jesus still nailed to the cross in many churches throughout this world. My Jesus is not on the cross. My Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, praying for us, reaching out, saying, Father, let me go get them. My Jesus is out of that tomb. He's resurrected to the Father. He don't have jelly beans. He don't come in a red suit. He's my Savior. That's the biblical Jesus. Number three. In no particular order, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will get a new body. Take a look at your body from childhood. It's been some changes. Take a look in that mirror. It will change. It will get old. It will wrinkle. It will get ugly. But evolution says it gets better and better. Boom! I've seen pictures of me as a child. I've seen pictures of me today Say, ew, gross. This face defies evolution. You go to my Facebook page, you'll see how cute this face was as a little boy. Look at it now. And it's only going to get worse. It'll get worse if the Lord tarries it in a box. It'll be... be Come back and take, it will break down, it will be eaten of worms, it will turn to dust, and you'll see my bones. But God says, if I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, I get a new body. A body that won't age. Not only will I get a new body, the Bible says, number three, I will be without pain, without sorrow, and no troubles. People, believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, you do not need walkers anymore. Now, I'm not saying here on earth. I'm not saying that right now. You'll need walkers, crutches, and wheelchairs here. But in glory, there is no handicapped people in glory. God has promised those that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, I will give you no more pain or sorrow. There'll be no drugs, no alcohol, in heaven or hell. You'll have pain in hell, but you'll have pain relief in heaven by the Lord Jesus Christ. You may have a pharmacist in hell, you may have a pharmacist in heaven, but he'll never have to take care of you again. A new body... And complete joy for all eternity by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. I said in heaven. I didn't say on this earth. You'll suffer. You'll have trials. You'll have tribulation because we are sinners. The wages of sin is death. Number four, you'll get by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior in eternity is God will remove sin. 
You know what your problem is today? Your problem is you're a sinner. And the number one problem that you have by being a sinner is you're going to die. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So if we go to New Jerusalem by Jesus Christ and we don't die, that means God removes our sin. And when God removes our sin, that's it. No more troubles. By today, by placing your faith and your trust and your sins on the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed upon Calvary's mountain, upon that cross and the tomb that he laid in and the empty tomb according to the scriptures. When we get to glory, there will be no more sin. And a brand new, sinless, wonderful, great, holy, righteous body to go with it. And when we get to glory, you will not even recognize each other because you won't even know what your spouse looks like in a holy, glorified body, almost said horror. Number five, what you get by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. You get to be with the Lord Jesus Christ, the one that died for you. In the Bible, the Word of God, Jesus says that He still bears the scars for our sins. Now, wait a minute. Hold on here. By being washed in the blood of Jesus, I get a holy, righteous body, brand new, that will never sin again. And yet, when I get the glory and see Jesus Christ, I am going to be for eternally reminded what He did for me. By seeing those nail-pierced hands. The seeing that, that, that scar in His side that He said, Thomas, reach in there and put your fingers in. They're still there. The scars of our sins are still upon Jesus for all eternity. And you think Mary can do anything when our holy Jesus Christ, Savior, is still bearing the marks of our sins for all eternity? Jesus Christ will bear your sins if you believe on Him, and those marks are still there and will always be there when you look upon Him as your Savior. How do you know religion doesn't work? Where are the scars for sins? How do you know the Pope ain't good? Where is his scars for your sin? Well, Allah is God. Where are the marks of your sin upon Allah? Well, what about Jesus Christ? What about, how, how do you know Jesus is right? Because when I get to see Him, I'm going to see those marks, those marks that were there because of my sins. That's how I know Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Have you ever seen Him? No, that's faith. I will see Him. Now imagine. Imagine. You choose to reject Jesus Christ. As many of you will. I will not believe on Jesus Christ. I will not listen to you. And you stand before Jesus Christ at the great white throne judgment. And he reaches out that hand in judgment and there's the scar that was paid for you. You choose to reject. Those scarred hands that died for you that you rejected will point to a hell as Jesus says to you, Go to hell. Actually, you know what? Death and hell were cast in a lake of fire. And the, the new expression of the great white throne judgment is, Go jump in the lake. Did you hear that one? Hell is transformed into a lake of fire. Not only did Jesus tell you to, 
to go to hell, but he'll tell you to go jump in the lake. With that nail pierced hand that, that died for you, but you choose to reject. Now I remind you, everything I'm saying about Jesus is the Word. Remind you, everything I'm saying to you right now is in the Word. You can Google what I said. You can take this video. Google where in the King James Bible is what that idiot said. And the Google will show you chapter and verse of what I'm telling you. Show me where Jesus still has the mark as you open to the Gospel of John and he tells Philip, I mean, he tells Thomas, reach in and poke your finger in my hands of the scars. It's there in the Bible. Tell me where it says hell. Jesus never preached hell. You are a liar. You have never opened and read your Bible because Jesus preached nothing about but hell. You see, what's the difference? We have the Word. The Word became incarnate. The Word became a baby in Bethlehem and grew up and went to the cross as a 33 and a half year old man and died for my sins. That Word from Bethlehem to Calvary is God, is the Word of God. And the Bible says, what must you do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. So when you believe on Christ, you are literally putting your faith in the Word. Yeah, men wrote the Bible. But inspired by the Holy Spirit, inspired by God, who is Jesus Christ. Remember the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, 1 John 5, 7. Look it up. It's there. 1 John 5, 7. Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 1. About the Word. John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Acts 16, 31. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Everything I'm saying is coming from the Word. Everything I'm saying is Jesus Christ. There's a big difference. I can come up here with just words, men's words, but are they God's words? As we get these loud diesels out of the way, I'll continue to preach. There's a difference between God's words and man's words. If I were to get up here and say, Hocus Pocus, Eeny Monus Pocus, this blood is Jesus' blood, this blood is Jesus' flesh, there's nowhere that in the Bible. Those are men's words. If I were to get here and say, Hey, I want you to kill infidels because you'll get 72 virgins, that ain't Bible. If I get up here and say, Sell magazines door to door, that ain't in here. That's religion. Religion does not bear the scars of my sin. Matter of fact, they make more sin. The more you get involved in religion, the more you got to put under the blood of Jesus Christ. You're going to come to a sinful man to get your sin cleansed. Really? That's like me saying, hey, there's mud on your dress. Let me get some wine and, and clean it. Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 18. I said, let me get some mud that's on your dress. Let me get a little wine and to wash it. Though your sins be as scarlet, there's only one way to clean yourself up. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. What is that Lamb? That Lamb is the Word. The Word that's found in Exodus. Everything that they were supposed to do for that Lamb was done for Jesus Christ. The Word that stood before Pilate, the Word that stood before the chief priest was fulfilled in Exodus to happen with Jesus. They were to examine that lamb. 
That land was examined by the chief priest. That, that land was examined by Pilate, the Roman government. I find no fault in him. I find no fault in him. What about Herod? I have no fault in Jesus. That land that was to be killed was to have no imperfection, was to have no scars, no to be a perfect lamb. Jesus Christ was the perfect lamb, the lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. That lamb had to be killed by Jewish people. Or how many races of people were in the world at 30 A.D., 33 A.D.? Of all the races of people, one race took God's Son and nailed Him to the cross. What, what race do you think that was, according to the Scriptures? According to the Scriptures, according to the Scriptures, what people put Jesus Christ on the cross? The Word of God, Jesus Christ. The Jews. The Jews yelled out, Crucify Him! That's all according to the Scriptures. There are 48 prophecies of the first advent of Jesus Christ in the Bible, and all 48 prophecies came to be 100%. Praise God. That's the Word of God. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. In the beginning was the Word. The Word is and with. God, the Word is God. That's Jesus. You know why the Jehovah Witnesses have watchtowers? Because they don't have the Word. That's why they're a religion. And the Word, I've already said, has the, the scars in His hands, has the scars in His feet, and has the scars in His side because of my sin. I can go back to Father Fontaine in New London, my priest, if he's still alive, and he ain't got no scars. I ain't getting no closet with that guy. I ain't going to confess my sins to a scarless one. I'll confess my sins to the ones that have the scars on my sins. Where Acts 20, 28, notice I'm quoting you the Bible, I'm quoting you the scripture, I'm giving you the passages. Acts 20, 28 says God's blood was purchased for the church. Well, wait a minute. When did God shed his blood? Upon the cross. So again, Jesus has to be God according to Acts 20, 28. Number six, what happens when you get the glory by Jesus Christ? No more trials, no more tribulations, no more troubles. Satan and his followers will be banished into the lake of fire which burns forever, will be without the absence, will be in the... No more Satan. No more accuser of the brethren. Yes, the Bible says there's a Satan, a devil. And he's not that guy that wears a pitchfork in a red little suit. Satan can make himself look like a man. Satan can make himself look like a savior. Satan can do anything he can do to deceive you and not believe in Jesus Christ as your savior. Satan can be a little child. Satan could be a preacher. Satan could be a fruit dealer. Anything that prevents you from getting to the Word. Anything that steals the Word. Oh, wait a minute. In the Bible, in Mark chapter 4, Jesus tells us about a parable of a man that sold seed. Well, guess what that seed is? The Word. Mark 4. This is seed. Have you read Isaiah 53 about seed? I'm giving you chapter and verses. I'm giving you book titles, chapters, verses if I know them or remember. In Mark chapter 4, the Bible says that the Word of God is seed. Jesus Christ's seed. What am I doing here? I'm trying to plant crops. I'm trying to plant 
in your heart the seed of Jesus Christ, that it may grow. And produce a lot more better things than watermelon, tomatoes, potatoes, and popcorn, whatever else you have here. The seed that I put out that these farmers can't put out is eternal life by Jesus Christ, the Word. And do you know what the first enemy of the farmer that produces the seed to all that he can get? He gets it. It takes a seed, he just puts it out everywhere he can. You know what the first enemy that comes up? Birds. And you know what the Bible says that Jesus said that bird is? It's the devil. And believe me, I've seen Satan come and take this word right out of people's heart. I've seen him snatch it. And you know what Satan will do with the word? You know what Satan will do with that word that he snatches? He'll eat it up. He'll remove it from you, from your ground. And he will take that seed and crap it out while you die and go off in eternity into the lake of fire where he will be. Oh, great. Talking about, hey, I'm just a plain, honest preacher trying to be as clean as I can be. But that's what Satan does with the word when he steals it from you. When he takes that word from you, he devours it and craps it out. That's what birds do. And you are left to die without Jesus Christ because He's stolen the Word from you. You better hear the Word of God. You better adhere to the Word of God. You better not let Satan take the Word of God. Let that seed germinate. It may not be today. I pray you believe on Jesus right now, today. But I wish that would happen for tomato plants, but it does take time. We come to you, Lord willing, week after week after week with the seed, the Word of God. Nothing else. I'm not bringing you traditions. I'm bringing you the Word. And that Word in the Bible is Jesus Christ. Now, I don't expect you to be happy and overjoyed. I don't expect you to shout, Hallelujah, he's preaching. Because you know the Bible speaks about you rejecting the Word. Do you realize you people that reject the Word of God are in the Bible? Matthew. And Matthew also tells us by the words of Jesus, some of you are going to approach Jesus Christ and say, Jesus, Jesus. And Jesus will say, depart from me, I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. Why? Because you had another Jesus. You did not have the Jesus that was approved of God. You do not have the Jesus that bears the marks of sin. Paul tells us to the Corinthian church, there is another Jesus. There are plenty of them. And the biblical Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You know, there's one word of God. Here I go. The King James 1611 Bible is the one word of God. What's another Jesus? RSV, INV, EIEIO. If it ain't King James, it ain't the Word of God. If it ain't King James, it don't bear the marks of your sin. How about that one? You may have the devil's Bible and say, I've got the Bible. You may have devil's Jesus and not have Jesus. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Oh, wait a minute, hold on. 1 John 5, 7. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. Try to find that in your modern Bibles. 
you got a Bible that removes the Word, that removes Jesus, and you think that's going to save you? You ought to be thankful, I know you're not, that this loud mouth holds a Bible. The Word of God speaks Jesus. You know, I could get up here and say anything I want to get your money. I, I probably can do it. I'm probably so slick, I could probably sell you used diapers and you would buy them. With a proper advertising. With a proper advertising, I could get you to buy dirty underwear. And you'd fall for it. And yet, I stand here preaching the Word of God, seeking nothing but that you might be saved and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no profit for this prophet. You say, you are a prophet? I know where you're going to go if you believe on Jesus Christ. Glory. I know where you're going to go if you don't believe on Jesus Christ. Hell, how's that for prophecy? Oh, the next man in the White House. Oh, he's the Antichrist in time. Now, how about you and your relationship with God? How about that prophecy? How about the fact is that the, that the tribulation has not come, the Antichrist is not in, in, empowered yet, because God is long-suffering. He wants you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and time's being held off because you won't believe on His Son. He's given you as a lost man more time to believe on His Son before He lets all the prophecies happen. But the Bible says God is, is not willing that any should perish. How's that one? How's that for a prophecy? God wants you as lost people to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and He's waiting, and He's waiting, and He's waiting, and He's waiting. Thank God I ain't God, because I ain't that patient. And yet the Word of God speaks. In John chapter 1, John chapter 1, let me find it here. It says, But as many as received him, to him gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his, on his name. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. John tells us who that Word is. John, the beloved disciple, leaned upon the breast of the Word and heard the heartbeat. And it wasn't Chevrolet. It wasn't made in Detroit. I mean, if you could put a, a, a label on Jesus Christ was made in Israel. The Savior had to be a Jew. Now imagine someone from the KKK believing on Jesus Christ as their Savior, and they're against Jews. <laughs> I laugh. Imagine for someone from the NAACP believing on Jesus when they believe the African race. <laughs> I laugh. And yet, I tell you today, on April 1987, I believe on the Hebrew word, Jesus Christ. And I don't even know Hebrew. I don't even know Hebrew, but my Savior's Jewish. You mean the carpenter? Well, I don't know. The 
Bible never says he was a carpenter. He said his father was the carpenter. I'll tell you who I believe on. The Jesus that sat at the temple and told his mother, I'm about my father's business. And the father's business was at the temple. That means his father was God. That's my Jesus. See, you got to understand by the Bible that there are other Jesuses out there and you can't be confused. I can't say that my Savior was a carpenter, but I can say my Savior was about the Father's business. you got to be careful because there's another Father out there, Jesus said. John 8, 44, look that one up. Boy, look at all the scripture I'm giving you. If you come up here, I will give you my business card. You can go to my YouTube and my uh, my Facebook, and you can find these videos and write these scriptures down. Check it out. They're being recorded. And everything I've said for you today is about the Word of God. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. That was a Jewish Lamb. Sent by God who is God. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. That is the Trinity. That, you notice how I didn't say the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit? Because the Bible wants us to know that Jesus is the Word. In Genesis chapter 1 it says, in, God, uh, in the beginning God created the heaven and earth. And then it says the Holy Spirit. Well, where's Jesus? And God spoke, let there be. When, when God said, let there be, that was Jesus Christ. So the Trinity spoken about in 1 John 5, 7 is there in Genesis 1 when everything was made. And everything that was made is John chapter 1 is the same one that was born in the manger and died upon the cross. That one that died upon the cross to shed his blood for your sins is the Word. And the Word says, What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Number six. And what happens when you get to glory by Jesus Christ? You will never sin again. When you die and go to glory under the blood of Jesus Christ, you will be at the point that everything you think, everything that you say, everything that you do will be forever right. There will be no wrong when you get to glory by the blood of Jesus Christ. There will be no sin once you get to glory by Jesus Christ. You will be sinless perfection when you get to glory by Jesus Christ. In other words, what I'm saying is you'll be like Jesus Christ. With one exception. You will not ever bear scars again. Like our Savior will bear scars. And is bearing scars. The word that we preach unto you is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Not only the Son of God, He is God. Not only is He God, but He is the Word. Not only is He the Word, He's the Savior of the world. Not only is He the Savior of the word, world, he's the, he's the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. And not only is He the Lamb of God that's take away the sin of the world, but He wants you to be, He wants to be your Savior today, right now. The invitation's now. Come now, let us. And that's God speaking. And it's talking about Isaiah 1.18 is with your sin.
The Word of God became flesh, and that flesh is Jesus Christ. That's what we preach. You know what life will be without Jesus? Hell. That's simple. Your life with Jesus and the end wrong and the eternity will be glory. See, everything rests upon Jesus Christ. Many of you will not believe on Jesus for one reason. That one reason you will not believe on Jesus is because you, don't, you want to get to heaven and everybody worship you. Two weeks ago we had a whole bunch of signs with names on them. And only one sign that had the sign of Jesus Christ's name. And that sign was here for about an hour, then it left. There are still signs here on the trees for a person. But those signs one day, when the earth burns, they'll burn, they'll melt. But the name of Jesus Christ will last for all eternity. See, look, look over here. There's conversa Jesus is conversation. He's the Word. Some idiot probably marked it. 
Yeah. Remember, you hear it first in Daytona Beach, the Holy, Holy Savior. Listen, Jesus came down from heaven. He didn't come down from Jupiter. That was Diana. That's the image that fell from Jupiter. But you've got to have a being that came from outer space, from heaven glory, who's Jesus Christ, who bears the marks of our sins. How much is the Word of God? Look at our car. It's parked right here in the front. You know it's our car. It's all Scripture. It's all the Word of God. It's all Jesus. That's what it's all about. And when you reject the Bible, listen to me. You're going to hear this again. Hopefully you don't. But if you continue to reject the Word of God, you have rejected salvation. You have rejected Jesus Christ. And you will not be in heaven. You'll be in hell. And if a man can't get a drop of water, he ain't going to get beer and whiskey. And if he can't get any mercy, he ain't going to get no medication. And if he can't get grace, he will get no relief. You'll be too much in pain to be partying with your friends. And in hell, you're the absence of love because God is love. Your friends won't care about you. See, when you reject the words that's being preached, you're rejecting Jesus. I don't care what religion you come from. I'm a Catholic and I believe in Jesus, but I don't believe in... Shame on you! You got a third, day, a third grade education, you can't read the Bible to see what Jesus really said? You can't read Jesus in America? I'm Allah. Me, Muslim. Well, we'll get your Bible in your language so you can see how what Jesus said compared to what Allah said as Allah's casting the lake of, lake of fire which burns forever. And you can find out what Jesus said, what you need to do to get out of religion and be saved by the word Jesus Christ. I don't believe in God. You're full. The word of God. So, two places in Psalms. I forget what the chapters are, but they're verse 1. Each of those passages are verse 1 in the book of Psalms that the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. You come to me. I'm an atheist. God already said you're a fool. The Word of God said it. The Word of God in Psalms in two places declares, if a man comes to you and says he doesn't believe in God, he's a fool. I didn't say that. I didn't say that at all. What's the Word of God say? I'm going long-winded today, but I'm just on fire. What's the Word of God say? The Word of God says there is a hell. All is not well. There is a hell. The Word of God says if you reject Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, who is God, will cast you into that hell. And you will burn there for eternity for rejecting Jesus. That's what the Word of God says. Say, show me. Come over here and I'll show you. I dare you to step out and challenge me with the Scriptures. And you know in the back of your heart that I'm right and correct with this Bible. You just let pride and ignorance and Satan stand in the way. I'll tell you what else this Word says. It says that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's Jesus speaking. That's what the Word of God says. The Word of God says, in the beginning God created heaven and earth. I don't care what your teacher taught you. Your teacher's wrong. And if you say to your teacher, I heard a guy say that you're wrong about evolution, you tell them my, your, my name is Stanley Hayward, and I will tell them to their face. With the Bible in hand to show them that God created it 
all. The Bible also says, What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Acts 16, verse 30 and 31. What's the Bible say? Yea, though I walk to the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil. What about you? When are you going to clasp for that non-Jesus? Let me hold on to it a little more. Let me go a little more. Give me, give me the reception key. Give me the paddles. What else does the Bible say? Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. What else does the Bible say? I was just going to call a scripture and forgot. Um, Be not deceived, God's not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. What else does the Bible say? Death and hell were cast in a lake of fire. This is the second death. What else does the Bible say? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except ye born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. You know, the Bible says that the Word of God, Jesus wept. The Word of God wept. The Word of God said, Behold the man! Talking about Jesus. The Bible says, Come now, let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as so. you got a serious problem called sin. Sin marks up the Word. What else does the Bible say? If thou shalt confess your sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin. What else does the Bible say? It says, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. What else does the Bible say? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I'm talking to each and every single one of you and pointing it right back at myself in the mirror. There is none righteous. No, not one. Fear him that's able to destroy the the body and soul in hell. And there's much, much more. And the hard thing about it is you've heard the Word of God today. And I've known some of you have just paid attention to what I've said. And that Word in Mark 4 has been sown in your heart. And if you fail to let that seed produce and germinate and grow, You will stand before the Word, Jesus Christ, one day in condemnation, damnation. And you will not be able to say, I never knew. You see, a man standing on the street preaching the Gospel, preaching the Bible, has made you excuseless before God. You cannot now say, God, I never knew. Because God would say, hey, listen, I sent that guy, and he preached my word, even though you didn't believe it, but he was faithful to my word, even though you didn't want to believe on it. He is to the word of God, and he told you how to be saved. Salvation is wrought in a man, not anything. The only way to God, Jesus said, is Jesus Christ. That's it. You 
You take any other man, you take any system, you take anything out of the equation. It's Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. And only Jesus saves. Let's just take the, ba the, the plain, simple fact that we all can agree on. Well, maybe not all. I should be careful there. But let's take a plain, simple fact. We are all going to die. Then what? Then what? Well, if we go what the Bible says, there is an afterlife. There's only two. There's heaven or hell. Don't rely on purgatory. The popes keep opening and closing it, opening and closing it, opening and closing it, opening and closing it. They don't even know about this stupid place. But the Bible says, not man, the Bible says there's a heaven or there's a hell. All right, we can agree we're all going to die. The Bible says you're going to heaven or you're going to go to hell. But the Bible says in order to go to heaven, you've got to believe on the Jesus Christ. You've got to believe on the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. The Bible says in order to get to heaven, you've got to deal with your sin condition now before you die. That's the Bible. Well, what if I don't believe on Jesus Christ according to what the Bible says? Hell. So you're saying the only way to get to God is by Jesus Christ alone, correct? What do you do to go to hell? Anything you want to do. And you don't have to do nothing to go to hell. You can do or not do to go to hell. But if you want to go to heaven, you've got to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. And that's in the Bible. That's John 14, verse 6. That's Revelation chapter, I mean, Romans chapter 10. I'm quoting you the scripture, the Bible. It's not me. It's what God said. It's Jesus said, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost said it. And you don't even realize when you're angry with a man preaching at you from the Bible, you're not angry at me. You're angry at God. See, God is not American God. In the end, you got winners and you got losers. In the end, you got heaven or you got hell. There's no, oh, let's play a game and everybody, you know. That's a sissy, spineless, jellyfish way of living. There's one God, one salvation, one way. And God said, that way is Jesus Christ. And I don't believe it. I don't believe it. That's your opinion. And your opinions are like armpits. They stink. And you try telling that to God. I don't believe it. I don't think it is. Well, it's like a butt. It's just a fart in the air, and then you're gone for all eternity. Because that's what God's going to think about your opinion. It stinks. Your opinion's wrong. This is not my opinion. This is what God said. And God said, the Lamb of God would take away the sin of the world. That's what God said. That's what God said. God said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's what God said. Remember when I started this, John chapter 1. I'm having fun. The Word of God excites me. Makes me happy. Makes me joyful. No, I'm great joy to have the Trump all right now and leave you with Trump. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. Look it down. But many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, 
The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Number seven, what I get when I get... Actually, you know what? Number seven I get right now. I think seven. Number seven is something I get right now by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. I become a son of God. God becomes my father. Don't come to me with this Catholic father junk. Because that's not God's way. But when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you become a child of God. And brother, when I say, when I get my daddy after you, oh, you better watch out. Because my father is God. And God right now, right now, is pleased with his son because I'm speaking about the word. His son. The Lord Jesus Christ. God says to a point in Romans 10, how beautiful are my feet that carry the gospel. And I got ugly feet. But that's not... God, as my Father and as His Son, is pleased with me right now because I bring you the Word. I have stood up and shown you what God expects from you. God's pleased. And when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you can become a child of God. Well, who cares? You don't want the Almighty, the Holy of Holies, the Creator, the all of all, the everything, the, 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 the righteous and all. You don't want that as your Father. You're going to pray to someone who won't even give somebody in his place a little drop of water. You're going to pray to that God. You're a fool. You're a fool to keep on believing religion and Satan. Or you can have God as your Father through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Sinless perfection in God the Father, and you can have Him as your Father by Jesus Christ. The one that made you is the one that died for you. And the one that died for you will welcome you into His glory by His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. The one that made you, God the Father, the one that died for you, God the Son, will cast you into hell if you do not believe on Him. And you can be absent from God for all eternity. And the thing is, it's your choice. God is allowing you to make the choice because He does not want robots. It's election day. And you can choose today to be elected by God by choosing Jesus Christ. You come to Jesus as you are as a sinner, and God will welcome you in. And have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life by the blood of Jesus Christ. Or you just keep on going the way you're going. And I rest assured the Bible's correct and right. You don't want to go your way without Christ. And the problem is, I know none of you, according to the Bible, says you don't fear God. There's no fear today. But you'll be trembling in your boots that you don't have at the great white throne judgment. You say, man, when are you going to shut up and go home? Why? The, the Word's eternal. It's going to go on and on and on forever. 
the word will go on even further than Daytona Beach will stand. I enjoy the Word of God. I enjoy talking about Jesus. I enjoy proclaiming Jesus. You know what the Bible also says? The Bible says, I need a little search in this one, but give me a little minute. The Bible says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of salvation. That's written in the Scriptures. I think it's Romans. But that's what the Bible says. And some of you are defying the Bible. Proclaiming, oh, I read the Bible, or I have a Bible, and it says you're not to be ashamed of the Gospel. It says go in all the world and preach the Gospel. You are stating your odds on one fact. You are hoping, maybe praying, that that guy is wrong. And you want to bet your eternity on that? And it's not that that guy's wrong. You think it's me, but it's not me. It's the Word of God again. You are trying to rest assured that that word that that guy preaches is wrong. And what you're telling me is you want God to be wrong. Oh, no, no, I wouldn't say that. Yes, you are. In Acts chapter 9, Jesus told Paul, Why persecutest thou me? Paul never persecuted Jesus. He persecuted Christians. And Jesus took it personally. When you stand against a man and the Word of God, God takes it personally. When you shout obscenities and curses at me, you are literally cursing at God and His Son, Jesus Christ. Watch what you say. I'm not saying me. No, no. You're doing it to God. I'm a sinner. I needed Jesus Christ just as much as you need Jesus Christ. But realize when I carry the right word in my hands and preach the word of God, your reaction God takes personally. Can you imagine one day you're standing before God and God tells me, God tells you, why'd you tell me to shut up? God, I never told you to shut up. Yes, you did. Every Saturday morning when you tried to sell your watermelons, you told me to shut up. Lord, I wouldn't do that. I didn't see you. That man that I sent to you, you told him to shut up. You tell me to shut up. That's the Word of God. Life is reached at Calvary. When you come to Calvary and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved, that's when life begins. My life began not at 40, not at 30. My life began April 1987 when I received Christ as my Savior. That's when life began. The words of life are proclaimed before you that Jesus saves, and you need, you need to believe on Him. No one can do it for you. There's no absentee ballot when it comes to your soul and God. And the Bible says the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. There's the word. That's what's been coming out of my mouth. I have spoken. 
believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. If you confess your sins, He is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins. If not, that echoes by, uh, 